Hi everyone, I'm Susan Mulvihill. Don't you think it's time for the first vegetable garden tour of the season? Well, come on inside and I'll give you the rundown. Well, our vegetable garden probably is looking slightly different from the last time that you saw it. Just about everything has been planted and all of the crops are doing well so far. But that hasn't been in any part thanks to the weather because we have had the craziest bit of weather over the last week or so. Initially, it was quite warm, really early on for us, and so I was able to plant most of the warm season crops a little earlier than usual. But then we had two inches of rain in 24 hours, and that is a lot for us. And then we had these awful winds that were just beating everything up, and I was worried about how everything would do, but somehow they're being very resilient. So I want to take you through the garden. You'll notice there are a lot of covers on some of the crops and I'll explain what those are for and if they're going to be on the whole season or be taken off shortly. You'll recall that my husband Bill is the pepper expert in the family. He absolutely loves peppers, both sweet and hot. We love to make salsas especially. And so in the hoop house, now that the cool season crops are out of there, we've got both hot peppers and sweet peppers growing, and all of them are doing great. They started out their lives under floating row cover just to give them some extra heat, and now they are out in the open and doing well. Now that I'm outside of the hoop house, you'll notice that the very first bed is covered with floating row cover. What's under there are very young zucchini seedlings. The reason the cover is on there is because it provides a few degrees of warmth and that's a really nice way to get those seedlings off to a good start. I'm growing Claremore, which is a light-skinned zucchini that is in the bush form, and also trombone zucchini, specifically Trombetta di Albenga, and that is a vining zucchini that will grow up that wire grid that you see. Next to that bed is the garlic and shallot bed, and those who were planted last fall, you can see they are doing absolutely terrific. And next to it is our copra onion bed. Copra is a very long-keeping onion that grows great for us and stores 8 to 10 and even 12 months, so it's definitely worth growing every year. I have temporarily uncovered the next bed just for you to see the plants and then the covers going right back over. So I'll explain what's growing in it first and then why there's a cover. These are purple of Sicily cauliflower. I'm very excited about growing them. And unfortunately, members of the cabbage family, such as cauliflower, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, kale, and so on, are bug magnets. They can get aphids and they can get cabbage worms, and those are the larvae of the cabbage butterfly. And so an easy way to eliminate that problem is by using floating row cover over the plants for the entire season. None of the cabbage family crops need to be pollinated, so that means I can keep the cover on as soon as I plant them and throughout the whole season. It totally works. Now you've probably also noticed the little copper rings around the bases. Those are to keep slugs away from the plants because they really love cabbage family crops. And what happens is that the slug's skin reacts electrically when they contact that copper. And so they want to stay away from it. And it seems to be working just great so far. I'm growing rutabagas for the first time ever and also carrots in this bed. In the foreground, you can see some seedlings. Those are the rutabagas, and I recently thinned them to about three inches apart. The carrots still have quite a ways to go before I start thinning them, but once they're about three inches tall, I'll thin them to about three inches apart. There's bird netting on this bed because since the seedlings are quite small, I worried that the birds might bother them. And so I'm waiting until the plants are a little taller and then that netting can come off. In this bed, I'm growing tomato plants. And you've probably noticed this red plastic mulch. What that does is it increases the soil temperature, which tomato plants love. And the red color reflects more light up into the plants, making them more productive, which is great. Hey, there's more pepper plants out here. That bill, I tell ya. 
Anyway, this grid here is for supporting the tomato plants. And what I'll be doing as they grow is weaving them in and out of the grid. I also will probably need to use some jute twine just to make sure the plants stay up close to it. But this works really well. It's sturdy and very inexpensive. That bill. In these next four beds, I'm growing corn and the variety is sweetness by color. And that's Clementine. I think she just laid an egg. <laughs> anyway, you're probably thinking that, boy, she has got the corn planted way too closely together. But actually, I've found I can grow corn intensively in raised beds. Ordinarily, you would plant corn in rows three feet apart with the plants 18 to 24 inches apart within the rows. I have found I can plant them roughly one foot apart in all directions and they still grow beautifully. I'm growing pole beans in the last two beds of this row and I wanted to point out this pole bean arbor because it is the coolest thing and I absolutely love it. You've probably seen it in previous videos but to recap it is made up of four individual trellises spaced a few inches apart each. Pole beans really need at least six feet for a support because they really grow like crazy. And so this is very durable. I bought it at a home center quite a few years ago. It's lasting beautifully. And what I love is that as the vines grow and produce, the beans mostly hang on the inside. And the best part of all is that during the heat of the summer when I'm picking beans, I get to stand inside in the shade and harvest. I love that. So let me show you what I'm growing. As you can see, the pole beans are already climbing the structure, and there are some that are almost three feet tall, which is amazing. And then in the foreground, you can see celery plants. These are tango celery, one of my favorite varieties, and I always plant them on the north side of the structure because they get a little bit of shade, which I think they appreciate. In these two beds, I'm growing more tomatoes, and it's primarily Gilberti, which is a paste tomato, and Chef's Choice Orange, which is a fabulous slicing tomato. And you'll notice I'm using the same type of a grid support for them, as well as the red plastic tomato mulch. Next to this tomato bed, I also am growing potatoes in a cloth grow bag. And it's been connected to our drip irrigation system by Bill. Thank you, Bill. <laughs> And what you do with a grow bag is you kind of fold it down to the outside so that it's rather short and you put in some potting soil, put your seed potatoes on top and a little bit more potting soil. You let the plants grow. Once they're up a few inches, you pull up this outer sort of cuff of the bag and put in more soil, let them grow a bit, put in more soil. And by the time it's all filled, this bag is going to be completely unfolded and up as tall as it goes. Um, so this is a great way to grow potatoes. Very simple and the cloth grow bags are quite inexpensive. In the next bed, you're looking at tomatillos and we've provided some stakes to support them with as they grow. Now you'll notice there's something under a cover directly to the right of the tomatillos and those are some winter squash. The bed just past it also has winter squash growing in it. And those floating row covers are there to keep them warm for a couple of weeks and then I'll uncover them. The third bed is where I'm growing broccoli, which I'll uncover and show you in just a moment. And then the bed that is just past it has melons growing in it. Here's the broccoli bed temporarily uncovered. And it's the same drill as with the cauliflower. You'll notice the plants look really pristine, which is awesome. So I'm using the floating row cover as a physical barrier to keep both aphids and cabbage butterflies away from the plants. You'll notice there's a couple I've had to stake, and there's also those copper rings at the base to keep slugs away. Now to put the cover right back on. Now I'm in what I like to refer to as the south annex of our vegetable garden. And that's where we have three more raised beds that are four feet wide by 16 feet long each. 
in the front of this bed you can see that I'm growing potatoes and they are growing beautifully. The two cultivars we're growing this year are Viking Purple and Bluebell and both of them are awesome types of potatoes. Now something that I wanted to point out is that now the plants are ready to be mulched around and this is so important. What happens is sometimes potatoes develop at the soil surface and when the sunlight hits those potatoes they naturally form a chemical called solanine and that's what turns potatoes green. That substance is considered harmful to eat and so by mulching the soil surface you can prevent that from happening. I'm going to use grass clippings from our lawn because we don't use weed and feed or other herbicides so it will be perfectly safe to put around the potatoes. Do you remember when we planted these peas in the garden? We had started them in rain gutters and you can see they are doing great. We also made this English style support using old pruned apple branches and you are not going to believe it but they are sprouting and even blooming. <laughs> I hadn't expected that because they were laying on the ground probably for like two or three weeks before I even used them. So that seems amazing to me. But the peas are doing great and I'm thrilled. You might recall this new arch that we made using two cattle panels or livestock panels. And this is the last area that needs to be planted. I'm going to plant vining things that will grow up on this support and I'm really excited about it. So examples are going to be cucumbers and cucamelons, delicata squash because they're pretty small, a few types of melons and other small winter squash. So that's going to happen in the next few days. In the back half of this bed is where I have Swiss chard and beets. It's covered by floating row cover because I'm trying to prevent the leaf miner flies from laying eggs on the leaves of the plants because they can wipe out a planting and nothing flat. So this is going to stay in place for the entire season. In the back half of this last bed, I've got all kinds of lettuce. They're fairly small seedlings at this point, so they're not much to look at. And you might notice that I've got them covered with bird netting and that's because birds think lettuce is delicious. And so that bird netting will stay in place for the entire season and I've left a few loose spots for me to reach in to harvest the leaves. Well Digby and I hope that you enjoyed the first vegetable gardening tour of the season. Happy gardening!